like to answer reader question number three. Thanks to my longtime friend Bobby for sending in this question and helping me procrastinate working out, which is why I look like this. Anyway, her question was, do I need a serger to sew with knit fabrics? And my quick answer is no, you certainly don't. So if you want to shut the video off right now, you're welcome to do so. But if you want to find out a little bit more about stitches that you can use on your regular machine and why I recommend them, stick around. So as you can see behind me, I do not have the latest and greatest model of a sewing machine. I use an older model FAF and it's been wonderful. So my first suggestion is really get to know the stitches on your machine. You might be surprised that these older machines offer a lot of variety when it comes to your stitches and what they can do for knit fabrics. So how do you do that? Well, you have to get the manual out and you have to start reading it. And if you don't have your manual, look it up online. Most of them are there and you can print it out. Even on my machine, just a few years ago, I discovered, ah, oh, look at all those stitches. So some of these I'm gonna talk about in a little bit that I've now been using all the time. And I'm thinking, why did I not figure this out a long time ago? It would have made my life a lot easier. So let's start with the very basic. You're gonna use a basic sewing machine. Make sure you have a stretch needle in your machine. These two I'm going to show you. One is called a Jersey Ballpoint. The other one's a Microtech Sharp Needle. I'm not going to get into a lot of details right now other than to say change your needle frequently. Make sure it's a stretch stitch um, needle. And the other one's going to be this twin needle which is going to have two needles coming out of it and I'm going to tell you about that one in a little bit. And your very basic option would be to use a zigzag stitch or a lightning bolt stitch, some people call it on their machines. And you just need to kind of play around on a scrap piece of fabric of the same knit you're using with different lengths and widths to see what size you like for that stitch. You'll wanna turn your fabric to the right side, look at the stitch that you made, or I'm sorry, the seam that you made and make sure, is it pulling apart? Because if it's doing that and you can see all the threads, then it's way too wide or it's way too long. And so you need to kind of play around with your different settings until you get the stitch that you want. So that's a very basic one to put together two knit um, edges. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my wording there. To make a seam. Now, if you want to get in a little bit more detail, you want to have a little cleaner finish on it, you could move to the twin needle. Let me show you what a twin needle will provide. Here's a shirt sleeve. Okay, and you can see two rows of parallel stitching on this side. Okay, and on the back side, it's just going to be this zigzag stitch running through. So you can see here, I did not finish off my edge because I'm lazy. Okay, yes, that's part of it. But also because it's knit fabric and it won't fray. So you don't have to. You certainly could and it would probably look nicer, but you would need a serger. So <laughs> for this, you can still get a beautiful finish. And as you can see, I have a serger and I don't always use it because time. Um, but it will give you that nice clean finish. The only thing I don't like about a twin needle, I mean, there's a few things that you have to kind of um, learn about them. That's actually a whole nother question and answer video. But you have to stitch them from the right side of the fabric. So you cannot see the underside. So if your hem allowance is not very big, you can easily miss that in the stitches. So that's one thing I don't love about the twin needle. So to cheat that and to get around it, one of the stitches I recently discovered was kind of this honeycomb stitch on my machine. And I really love it. I mean, here's another pair of port leather pants because what else do I wear? And this um, hem, if you can see the stitch, it kind of just goes back and forth. And again, look at that. I didn't finish the edge of these pants either. You all are seeing how lazy I am sometimes. Um, the thing I like about it, and I loved it on all the swimsuits I recently made, is that you can do it from the wrong side so you can see exactly what you're doing and where you need to catch uh, because the stitch looks the same on both sides. But it also gives you a little bit more wiggle room. You don't have to stay on such this, you know, tight line and making sure you're catching everything. Because it kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, it catches the fabric a little bit more and it's much more forgiving of a stitch in my opinion. So something to check out if you haven't tried that stitch on your machine. The last thing I'm going to say is thread. 
Okay, you can use a woolly nylon thread, which is going to be a stretch thread in the bobbin of your sewing machine, your regular machine. Bobbin only. And you have to hand wind it. So that would be a downside, but it'll give you a little bit more stretch to your stitch and hopefully prevent them from popping. This is a maxi lock stretch thread similar to this woolly nylon. I have not yet tried this in the bobbin of my machine, but I have read that you can do the same thing and hand wind it and use it like you would a woolly nylon. Um, but I actually use it, those spools on my serger are this stretch thread. And just a side note, if you do have a serger, you can use that on um, knit fabrics or on woven fabrics and it's like my favorite thread. So just a little something to keep in mind. There are a couple other stitches I just want to talk about real quick from your regular machine. This is a triple stitch stretch zigzag. <laughs> I think I just threw in a whole bunch of extra words there. Anyway, you'll see that it moves. It's got three stitches each direction of the zigzag. And this is awesome to put on elastic. Makes it so much easier when you're inserting elastic into anything and um, putting it on. I already talked about my honeycomb stitch. And so my last one I'm going to talk about is this triple stitch stretch, um, but it's straight, okay? The way that the machine stitches it, it does have a little bit of give to it. It's a very strong stitch. So when you turn it right sides out, you're not going to see all your thread and it's not going to pull apart. It's very, very strong. So it's nice to use it, especially um, in like pants and things like that any of the seams that are really going to get worn like under the arms or things like that it's nice to have that triple stitch but word of warning don't ask me how i know this it's horrible to seam rip it's horrible to take out so be sure that you've got everything in its place that you're putting it together correctly before you use a triple stitch um on your machine because yeah it's not fun. So baste it first and then finish up with this. All right, I've talked longer than I was planning on it and I hope you were able to follow along with me and keep up with all the different stitches, threads, needles, all the things that you can do and yes, all with your regular machine. So don't sell it short. It definitely can do all the work for you for putting together beautiful knit garments. I hope this was helpful. I'll talk to you all again soon. Happy stitching.